somebody has to get together like the top 10 20 players talk to each other and just draft a letter saying this is unacceptable and we're not going to play in these tournaments unless the dress code is changed to something that that is about common sense we have Iranian or Iranian chess arbiter clashes with FIDE over human rights attire okay the Iranian international arbiter Shora Bayat was reprimanded by the International Chess Federation FIDE for wearing pro-human rights clothing at the 2022 Fisher Random World Chess Championship in Reykjavik Iceland while FIDE considered it unprofessional Bayat pointed out that a dress code for arbiters does not exist Bayat, a 35-year-old Iranian who lives in England, was one of the arbiters of the Fisher Random World Chess Championship, which took place October 25th to 30th, 2022, in Reykjavik, Iceland. During the first day of play, under a dark gray glittering open sweater, she wore a t-shirt with the slogan, Women, Women, Life, Freedom, in support of the civil protests against the Iranian regime and its violation of women's rights. Soon, she was asked to stop this. <clears throat> all right so as we see the dress code it does not only apply to players it apparently is an issue with arbiters too now it just gets better and better let's keep going the Icelandic organizers did not have a problem with the t-shirt it was David Yada Fide's chief marketing and communications officer who approached Bayat and asked her to wear something more neutral the next day Bayat pointed out to Yada that a dress code for arbiters does not exist the next day, FIDE President Arkady Dvorkovich came to the tournament, as Boyat pointed out, wearing jeans and a t-shirt himself. But that was only briefly after his arrival. He did not talk to Bayat about her clothes, but in a WhatsApp message, he told her not to mix politics with chess and asked her to stop wearing the t-shirt. Bayat asked for a written request, which did not materialize. <clears throat> So first things first, um, I, I, I suspect that this did not come from David himself. This probably came from higher up now i will say it's kind of amazing to see arkady dvorkovic saying that we should not mix politics and chess considering that dvorkovic even though he is no longer a part of the kremlin and the russian government um he still has a lot of ties to the russian government he is still very involved in some ways and so for for, for dvorkovic to say this is questionable questionable let's 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 leave it at that questionable at best um anyway the article continues at first, Bayat sent an emotional reply, but deleted it before Dvorkovich had seen it. She decided to give herself a day to think about the situation and wore something neutral. The next day, however, she appeared in the playing hall with a blue shirt and a yellow skirt, deliberately in the colors of the Ukrainian flag. It was to show solidarity with the Ukrainian people, said Bayat. Although her pro-Ukrainian stance could easily be connected to Russia's invasion and the ongoing war, she was referencing the Islamic Revolutionary Guard Corps' shooting down of a Ukrainian airline's plane on January 8, 2020, which killed all 176 passengers and crew aboard. All right. Good look. I agree with it. Um, anyway, here, here, we, here, we, here we go. More and more. In a statement to the, for the media, Yada explained why FIDE responded to Bayat's attire in Reykjavik the way it did. While we respect Ms. Bayat's political stance and activities, any FIDE official needs to follow politically new, political neutrality while on duty, and of all the official positions one can hold, that of an arbiter is the one that demands higher standards of integrity, neutrality, and discretion. No matter how noble or uncontroversial the cause is, doing activism from that role is inappropriate on professional. So let's slow down for one second here, okay? <clears throat> We're gonna back up one second. I'm gonna say what I think the new FIDE stance should be is quite simple. Nobody is allowed to have a stance on anything whatsoever. It does not matter whether you, an arb whether you are an arbiter. It does not matter whether you are a player. No matter who you are, you are not allowed to have any, any, any sort of any sort of um, fashion sense, any sort of uh, stances on causes, et cetera, et cetera. That is the bottom line because once again, we, we, I will talk about a separate issue that occurred during the FIDE, FIDE um, during the Fisher Random World Chess Championship. So, as people know, uh, I was wearing dark jeans on a couple of the days. Now, I was told by the organizers that apparently dark black jeans were not appropriate attire and I had to wear, or sorry, not, not dark black jeans, sorry. I was told that, um, sorry, let, let me back up. I was told that jeans were not allowed. I wore these sort of like grayed, grayed out jeans that weren't allowed. Now, I spoke to the arbiter 
All right, I spoke to the organizer and the organizer said that it was okay to wear dark jeans, which is why, as you'll notice in the last two days, I was wearing dark black jeans. Now, big credit goes out to the organizer who was not part of FIDE, let's be very clear. This was JJ uh, or Yaron Olin um, Jansen. He was the organizer. He was not part of FIDE. Big, big shout out goes to him for what he did, basically using some form of common sense. On the other hand, however, Jan Napomniachi was warned about wearing a t-shirt very early on during the event. Now, on the final day, he wore a suit, very normal attire. I think he beat Magnus, and then we had to plan our finals. And for the Armageddon game, he decided he was going to wear his Game of Thrones t-shirt. Now, of course, he ended up arguing for probably like five minutes before the final game began. And then he was told, well, you can wear the t-shirt, but you're going to get a fine. And that's that. Um, So... Like th there, there, there were plenty of uh, things going on during the event. It was not just solely about this Arbiter dress code. Now, that being said, of course, I think this whole thing is kind of insane. I'm going to be honest. Like, once again, FIDE is showing for the millionth time they do not understand what the target audience is and that nobody really gives a flying fridge about the dress code. If you act within common sense, then nobody, nobody is going to complain. Everything will be fine. But when you start going out of your way and being very dogmatic on the issue and trying to say it has to be this way, this way, this way, um, all you do by all you do when you have that attitude is you end up pushing more people away from chess, or not even necessarily away from chess, but more towards the online community and more towards chess.com. If I'm being super, super blunt here, um. So FIDE really needs to get with the times and understand that at the end of the day, nobody really cares. If I'm wearing a nice dress shirt, nobody cares if I'm wearing jeans. Nobody cares if I'm wearing like, you know, when I saw Jan wearing this Kate Miras Bobo t-shirt during the during the World Blitz portion um, in uh, Almaty, Kazakhstan, I loved it. I thought it was amazing. I thought it was great that Jan, Jan was doing that. And, and then what happens, Jan gets told you can't do that. So the bottom line, as I see it, is that players, basically somebody, and I'm not going to say it's me because it probably won't be me, but somebody has to get together, like the top 10, 20 players talk to each other and just draft a letter saying this is unacceptable and we're not going to play in these tournaments unless the dress code is changed to something that, that is about common sense. Um, that, that is the bottom line. Okay. Anyway, let's keep going. All right, so I said I read this paragraph. Um, it was a show solidarity with the Ukrainian people, said Bayat. Although her pro-Ukrainian stance could easily be connected to Russia's invasion and the ongoing war, she or sorry, I read this. She was referencing the Islamic Revol Revolutionary Guard Corps shooting down of Ukrainian Airlines plane, which, by the way, I think this, if I'm not mistaken, isn't the Ukrainian Airlines plane tied in to that whole separate issue with the U.S. and a certain, um, you know, in a sense, assassination of, of uh, an Iranian general? At any rate, let's keep going. Um, in a statement for the media, Yada explained why, or, or wait, no, sorry, we, we covered this too. Okay, so let's, let's keep going. Paul Mayer Dunker, the president of the Berlin Chess Society, argued on Twitter that Dvorkovich's request to buy out to change her attire was contrary to the values of sport, the chess world, and the FIA charter. He referred to paragraph 4.3 of the charter. 4.3. FIDE is committed to respecting all internationally recognized human rights and shall strive to promote the protection of these rights. Solid. It's in the FIDE charter right there, number 4.3. For Bayat, the fact that there is no official dress code for arbiters is crucial. I am an arbiter. I am an arbiter. I am the first person who follows and who has to follow rules and regulations as long as they exist. The whole point is that they cannot ask me to follow unwritten rules. When when it is written, I would be the first person to follow it. Yada told Chess.com that FIDE is working on a dress code. So maybe they're actually going to come to their senses and stop being complete morons on the topic. Um, maybe, maybe. But again, most likely what's going to happen is that this is going to get buried. And then there's going to be the FIDE Grand Well, I guess FIDE Grand Prix doesn't exist. But you're going to see FIDE tournaments slowly creep back in. You're going to get the contract and you're going to see the same exact dress code as before. So unless something actually changes, like they publicly do something very soon, I think it's going to end up being business as usual. Now, hopefully I'm wrong, but my assumption is that things are not likely going to change. Um... Around the time the tournament ended, the term limit for the FIDE Arbors Commission came to an end. According to Bayat, who was a counselor for four years, she was removed from the commission because of the incident. Test.com has seen a message from a high-ranked FIDE official who told Bayat, I know you got removed from the commission because Arkady was furious with you. Okay, well, as we all know, this is, once again, this is not some big shocking piece of news. This is how the chess world works, and of course she lost. Of course, she lost her role because 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 of someone, whether it was Dvorak or otherwise, someone very high up didn't didn't like what she was doing. 
So very typical retribution, very standard from Fide. Why am I not surprised? Um, Bayat said she cannot be a member of the Women's Rights Commission right now because a delegate of the Iranian Chess Federation is also on the commission. She, she would have to work with someone from a federation that attacked her three years ago. Solid. <laughs> very, very solid. It, all these stories just get so, they're just so good, aren't they? I mean, just when you think that it can't get more insane, it gets more insane. Um, so basically she, she wears something, you know, it could have been as simple as saying, okay, well, you know, just wear something else even something like, okay, you can wear it today, change it tomorrow, some common sense thing, but no, it's not okay. That has a, that basically you can't wear that. And then secondly, let's be vindictive in the meantime and punish her for that as well. Of course, obviously, um, a great attitude to have. Okay. The picture of me playing Jan in the final. Now this of course is funny too, you guys, because this is the third game when Yan won, and Yad is wearing a dress shirt and a jacket. But of course, as I alluded to earlier, before the Armageddon game, he obviously changed. In January 2020, Bayat worked as an arbiter at the Women's World Championship in Shanghai. Photos appeared online where she was not or not properly wearing a hijab, a requirement in Iran for women in international public settings. Fearing a likely severe punishment, Bayat never returned to Iran since. She sought asylum in the UK, where she now lives with her husband. She plays and referees under the English flag. In 2021, she won the International Women of Courage Award for being a champion for women's rights and ignoring Iranian government threats. Although she doesn't consider herself an activist on Twitter, Bayat does not shy away from the message she wants to send. She denies it is political. What I stand for is a, is a human rights message independent of the country. According to Bayat, Fide, President Dvorakovich is not accepting criticism of Iran due to his proximity to the Kremlin and Russia's ties with Iran. Dvorakovich was an assistant to Russia's President Dmitry Medvedev between 2008 and 2012 and served as his Deputy Prime Minister from 2008 to 2012. Bayat, it is not me who makes chess political, it is Arkady. Well, typical classic, um, Classic stance, as we can see, why am I not surprised? I could literally shout from the rooftops all day long, all month long, all year long. This is nothing new. This is how FIDE works. It's how it's worked for a very, very long time. Um, Medvedev, yes, he, so, so Dvorakovic was very high up within the Russian government um, during the previous administration. Okay. It is not the first time FIDE struggles with the Iranian situation. In a letter from June, 2020, Dvorakovic strongly urged the Iranian Chess Federation to change its policy where athletes from Iran are not allowed to participate in games with Israeli citizens and to confirm in writing its position on the admissibility of such games. Failure to give such confirmation will force FIDE to discuss the compliance of Iran's Chess Federation's values with the principles of FIDE and the IOC, writes Dvorakovic. Okay. However, new cases continued to occur as recently as December 2022. At the Sunway Sitges tournament, GM Amin Tabo Tabo E suffered a forfeit loss. He couldn't play as an Israeli opponent in the first round. Now, big shout out goes to Amin because he did go on to have a very, very strong performance and finish in second place in that tournament despite losing the first game. At the FIDE World Rapid and Blitz Championships, the Israeli top grandmaster Boris Gelfon was awarded three forfeit wins for the games he was paired against Iranian opponents. While the International Judo Federation gave Iran a four-year ban after it pressured one of its fighters not to face an Israeli athlete, the International Chess Federation hasn't taken any concrete action yet. Meanwhile, FIDE has approached Bayat and stressed that her contributions to FIDE Arbor's commission during the last four years had been very important. The sides are planning to continue working together in the future. Unbelievable. I wanted to create a general awareness among the chess community and, ad and address that FIDE should not be political, said Bayat. We should stand for the right things when the time comes. I am aware that there are many injustices in the world and I cannot fight in many directions. I chose that my fight is for women's rights in Iran rather than FIDE, but I have to address serious problems when there is an elephant in the room. So FIDE shouldn't be political. I mean, of course FIDE shouldn't be political, but in reality, obviously it is very political and it has been very political for many years. I would say probably for the last 30 years, there has been a very strong form. I mean, it's a very, very like pro former Soviet Union and or Russia uh, attitude. And in large part, that's because the FIDE president has been from that part of the world. You had Kirsan Ilya Mzhinov, who was the president for, I want to say, about 20 years. You've had Arkady Dvorkovic, who's been the president for four years and counting. It'll be eight years, eight, I think. Or I think it's four year term. So I think it's eight years by the end of his end of his term. Um, and at any rate, it is 100 percent political. So. 
it's very, very disappointing. Um, you, you would hope that things change, but again, like with everything that goes on with Enfide, there are not enough people who can really speak up and say anything, and everybody really wants those positions within various commissions. So once again, no one's gonna say anything, and it's gonna get brushed under the rug, like everything else, and it's very, very disappointing. Um, but that's how it goes. So if we want more influence, we need to sponsor Fide in the West. Well, one of the reasons that Fide is struggling and one of the reasons that chess.com is just gladly munching their lunch every day and taking more and more of the pie that is chess in the world that we live in uh, is primarily because Fide is unable to get big sponsors because they're not able to get sponsorships from Russia and places like that due to the sanctions. Um, uh, Fide itself, if you go back maybe like a couple of years, they had a lot of sponsors that were Russian. And they're not able to get those sponsors because, because of course, obviously there's sanctions. And then separately, now the West doesn't want to have anything to do with FIDE either for the most part, because you have a president who was formerly a part of the Kremlin and is very close to a lot of people who are still part of the Russian government. So it is what it is, and it's very, very disappointing. But um, you, you would, once again, you would hope that things change, but it's just a typical FIDE L, like everything else they seem to do lately, and um, unlikely that things are going to get better. Now, the last thing that I will end with, um, just to be very, very clear about the topic, is there are definitely people within FIDE who do great things. It is not all of FIDE, every single person who does bad things. There are plenty of people who do good things, plenty of people that I know within FIDE who, I, who I'm on very good terms with. Um, but at the end of the day, as a whole, the decisions they make are very, very poor. Um, tell us how you really feel about FIDE. Well, like I said, there are people who do good, great things within FIDE, but as a whole, it's just, um, yeah, it's, it's not good. Wasn't Anand going to be FIDE president? Vichy is involved, but Vichy is also not somebody who's very political. So he tends to stay away from these sorts of things. And again, I'm not surprised that he does um, because that's what I would expect. So this is the article I wanted to cover you guys. Um, obviously disappointing, like everything else FIDE does lately. I mean, maybe maybe I'll get maybe I'll get a nasty email from Dvorkovic now about it for all you know, but who, who really cares? And um, yeah, it, it, it is what it is.